So what I had forgotten, I've seen the 1990 Royal Rumble, but probably not since 1990. Tony Schiavone on commentary. That's right. I completely forgot that he was yep. there this time. So what we see is a little bit of a, uh, a stare down, a crisscross, a double clothesline, a double down. And then whoever came in next came in. We didn't even see that part. We didn't see the finish. We just saw Hogan and Warrior going at it. It was such a nothing spot, but these people just went crazy for this. It was great. Well, you got to remember, it's 1990. You never, and I mean never, saw two baby faces fighting in WWF. That's true. Even in the Royal Rumble, you would hardly ever, you may see two guys grabbing like a headlock. You would very, very rarely see them just throwing punches or elbows at each other. It was just a bridge that was not crossed. And so when the biggest star they had and the guy they wanted to be the biggest star they had, they collided. It was it, it was uncharted waters. So it was a big, big, big deal. Well, now here they are together. Gene interviewing Hogan and Warrior at the same time. And the key is Hogan Dude, and Warrior. which War of these teams is more fucking bizarre? For, like, oh, totally different reasons. Like, perfect, well, perfect and the genius are bizarre, because, like, why are these people hanging out together? But Hogan and Warrior are just, like, the craziest fucking team. They're crazier right. than Hogan and Savage. Yeah, I can't go that far, but they're definitely oh, crazy. Oh, brother, you just wait. <laughs> definitely crazy. So both guys acknowledge that, yes, there's going to be turbulence, in the Royal Rumble, as it happens when you're flying 36,000 feet above everyone else. Hogan vows to unleash the warrior, who he says will take Mr. Perfect and the genius and press them into the darkness. I guess they're... Uh, uh, that escape, didn't happen, by the way. Gravitational escape velocity up into the darkness of cold space. So the warrior is talking about turbulence, not in the airplane vernacular, but his chemistry is to chemical agents bonding and boiling and mixing and eventually they form a stronger bond stronger he says than perfection or intelligence so it's hulk hulk hogan and the ultimate warrior versus mr perfect and the genius uh, i don't know i'd have to check if this is actually super bowl weekend but the super bowl was coming up in 1990 and jesse pointed out that hogan and warrior they're like the 49ers the huge favorites and Mr. Perfect and the Genius, they're the Denver Broncos. They are the underdogs. Well, the favorites won. <laughs> I will confirm both matches. Uh, the 49ers, much easier. 55-10 to 10 was the final of that game. So, <laughs> the most, the, my favorite part of this entire match is Warrior starts running wild at the beginning, and he's just body slamming dudes left and right. He body slams Perfect. He body slams Genius. He body slams Perfect. He body slams Genius. This goes on and on like eight times each. And Jesse screams, so maybe they're trying to tire him out with body slams. Which is funny. Because this is something a veteran will do if he wants to blow a guy up. It's just called body slams over and over again. So the guy has to lift him up over and over again until he gets blown up. And that is something you would do to the ultimate warrior. Well... To be fair, Vinny, I mean, you could have called, I'll stand there and you run into me ten times, and Warrior's still going to get blown up standing there. Valid. That's yes. Valid. Dude, Hulk Hogan in this match, he does all the body slams early. They get the heat on him by hitting him with <laughs> the fucking genius's metal scroll. He's yeah. got this fucking scroll. He's taking notes during the match. Yes. And then they beat on Hogan for a while, and finally Perfect hits the Perfect Plex, but he does not make the cover. He is going to allow the genius to get the pin. Why? I don't know. Nice guy, I guess. It's actually awesome because he has the perfect plex on. He's got the bridge. He's keeping the bridge, but he lets go with his arm to reach up and block the ref's hand. Yes. But he still has the hold on and the bridge. It's fantastic. Yes. So, so the genius tags in, and the genius hits a big moonsault, but Hogan gets the knees up. Yes. And then Kurt Hannon goes up top. Perfect comes off. Hogan gets the boot up. Yes. He's taking out both of these nerds. I am guffawing. He tags in the warrior. And God bless this guy. But I said it last week. He's fucking atrocious in the ring. And his comeback sucks. Like, the place is going crazy, but, like, when you watch the comeback, it's fucking terrible. At one point, something happens. He just stumbles and falls down. Which <laughs> I don't think is what he was supposed to do. Because they just keep going. But, like, yeah. he stumbled and fell down. So... I'm watching this, and Hogan hits a leg drop, and he pins a genius. And I just thought, first off, Hogan was a thousand times the worker of Warrior. Yes. I know I mentioned this last week, 
But now it's been months. And every week Vince is watching the Warrior. And like he's still determined to have Warrior replace Hulk Hogan. Okay? Now, if you watch WrestleMania 6, Warrior beats Hogan. Mm-hmm. And there's the famous moment where Hogan gives him the belt. And of course, everybody's more into Hogan losing than Warrior winning. Yep. Okay? Yep. And so, like, for years, people have talked about this sabotage, which, given Hulk Hogan, I'm sure there was a degree of that. But fucking bro, whether that happened or not, this warrior run is fucked. He's horrible. He's it was whole, not going to work no matter what. I watched this match, and it was great because of everybody except the warrior. Yeah. When I was a kid, it was great only because of the warrior. Which is eye-opening to me, because many times I have people on the show, wrestlers, I ask them their first memories of wrestling, who the first person was that really got them into this business. They're always these crazy names. I, I, I laugh, sometimes out loud, sometimes in my mind. But, bro, the fact of the matter is, when you first start watching wrestling, anybody can be your guy. That's true. That or anybody can be your woman. Yeah. Then that's what it is. Yeah. Fuck me, this was terrible. Warrior. Just horrible. Warrior was ter- terrible. Everyone else was He's worse than I remembered. Like, years later, I realized how bad he was. Yeah. But now I look back, and he's, like, twice as worse as I used to think he was. And never shows any signs of improvement. By Zero. Him. None. Yeah. He's just what he is, and that's what you get. So, Hogan works the match 80% for his team. Perfect works the match 90% for his team. He took more bumps in this match, violent ones, spinning out of control, well, not out of control, spinning on the floor, <laughs> flip bumps for everything, bumping his ass off on the turnbuckle. Uh, it's crazy to watch all that. And yes, the, the finish, or the, I shouldn't say the finish, the setup for the hot tag of the moonsault hitting the knee and in concert with Perfect coming off and getting his chin on a Hogan's boot and doing the stick figure bump off to the side, laughing my ass off. Also laughing my ass off at Warrior for totally different reasons. And then Warrior has the press slam. He goes for the splash, and Hogan blind tags himself in. And Warrior jumps over the genius and bonks into Hennig, and he goes down. Is that what happened? Yes. And Hogan comes in, cleans up, hits the leg drop, and wins. And I was certain that Warrior was going to be sour at the Hulk for stealing the pin. But that's not what happened. Warrior was totally fine with it. His team won. They're selling to be celebrating together. They're having a great old time. The heels come back for more. They jump these guys from behind. And as Warrior is throwing wild, out of control punches, he spins around and throws a wild, out of control punch, and he lays out Hulk Hogan. Dude, I will say, when this guy laid out Hulk Hogan with that lariat, the fans, it was like Ivan Koloff and Bruno San Martino. They went dead silent. So I know sometimes they will do, especially in this era, crowd sweetening. No. Is there such a thing as crowd souring? Well, I mean, you they can, turn all the mics off. You can mute them, yeah. Well, that, that, well, that sounds like what they, they chanted for Roman socks and everything like that. That is sounds like what they did here because the air gets sucked out of the arena. Everyone's beside themselves. Oh, my God, he hit the Hulk. Yeah, but when and, you say that, Vinny, you could actually look at the people and they're all just standing there and their yes. eyes are wide. That's so fair. I think they actually yeah. were, were in stunned silence that the warrior hit Hulk Hogan. Yes. So Hogan, the warrior tries to revive Hulk, so eventually Hulk comes to, and now he's salty, and they go nose to nose again. And we go to, we fade to black with the two of them going nose to nose. Hey, listen, say what you will, but this was a fucking awesome build for WrestleMania. I remember this when they went nose to nose, and the place was going crazy, and yeah. it was fucking awesome. And they just keep winning. What a novel concept. Neither you know, of them. The funny thing is, it's funny because, like, when you look at how long Hogan had been champion, with the exception of the thing with the Million Dollar Man and the, the one year with Randy Savage, I mean, he'd been champion since 1984, and it's now 1990. And honest to God, if you're going to do this match, like, the Warriors should have won, but I guess, I don't know. It was such a huge match that I can't really say you shouldn't have done the match. But, I don't know. I don't know. It's like, this was just the wrong guy. Warrior was a conundrum. 
Who else, who else would have been? Well, it wasn't you, you, time. I don't feel like it was time for Hogan yet. I see. I it see. didn't seem like people were turning on. Him. I mean, as we all, it's 1990. As we all know, Hulk Hogan stuck around for a long, long time. Yeah, he was this. around for a bit longer after that. But yes, yes. So. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full length shows. Down there on the bottom right hand side of the screen, click that join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube. Over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.